Hello everybody. In today's video, I want to share with you something that has changed the way I build things in Trello. I've been using it for a while, but if you haven't learned about them before, Butler variables, it's going to it's going to change your world. All right, so sit down with me here. So, if you've ever been trying to automate something in Trello and you're like, I want to reference something else about the card. So, for instance, when it when I I want it to move to a list, I want it to go look up a list from something else in the card. Or maybe you want it to post a comment with who's the person that, you know, did a certain action or something. And so what you're going to be looking for is Butler variables. And if you don't know why it's called Butler, it's because that's what Trello automation used to be called. Um, feel free to Google it if you want a history lesson or ask me and maybe I'll make a video about it. But Butler is what it used to be called. And so that's where we have the name Butler variables. And they give you the way to reference pieces of a card or attributes about it or about an action while you're doing automation. So for instance, let's say you wanted to know what time something was going on. Uh, you could add time in here. You can reference the day number. This is super useful if you're like, I want a new card that repeats every day and says, brush my teeth. Um, and if you don't want a thousand cards that just say exactly brush teeth, you could literally say brush teeth on and then it has the date in the card because you would literally just, it could say, brush my teeth on this day, which could then set the due date and do, do other stuff with it as well. Um, so that's super cool, but it's also helpful too if you're looking at things like, I want to know maybe things about like the card. I want to know what is the card link? So maybe you're sending a notification, an email notification about something that happened in a card and you want to say, hey, go check it out, card link, and it will grab the URL of that card. Another thing you might want to do with it is, for instance, with the checklist, you might want to know um, like if the, how many things are in the checklist or you might want to know if something's been crossed off. But one of the ones I'm really just going to skip ahead to that I really like is when you're adding trigger to something. So for instance, if you have an action where if one thing happens in one card, then go find another card and make a change in that. But you need to reference what to change from the trigger card. You can reference that, whether it's the due date, the card name, the, the card list. You can just put trigger in front of any of these variables and it will go reference things about that card. So it can reference the, the labels from that card. It can reference the card due date, the trigger card due date, anything you want from that. Um, just put trigger in front of it. And another thing that's super, super cool about it, if you do username, so whenever you use username, it's going to reference whoever triggered the action. So for instance, you might make a rule that says when someone moves a card to another list, um, that's not a good example. Maybe, maybe when someone changes a custom field value, you might want to know who changed the custom field value. And by default, um, you, you may not may not know that. And so the way you can do that is you can make a rule that when custom field value is changed, post a comment that says username, change the value. And that way, you know, previously what you would have had to do is add a filter for if Brittany does it, post a comment that says Brittany did it. Or if, you know, Tom did it, post a comment that says Tom did it. But now you can literally just post one rule when it changes, share the username. And so it's really cool for a lot of different things. Another thing I want to mention about it is that you can reference custom fields. So you can reference the value of those custom fields. And one of the ways I do that is actually in my meal planning remake board. If you haven't heard me talk about this, I'll include a video and show you. But I have all sorts of rules that move cards around. And so when a card is added to the board, um, it will it will create a... Uh, doo -doo -doo, let me show you an action here. When a card is added to the board, so let's just say I'm adding it here it's going to update this custom field of origin with that list name that it's in so that way I always know like what type of meal it's in and then the, and the way I'm able to do that again is by referencing Butler variables so let's, let's just find in the card it is added to the board set the origin to card list name and this again just so you know the way you reference it is by putting those curly brackets around it this is a great way to be able to actually you know i could i didn't have to make a rule that said when it's added to generic set it to generic when it's added to this list set it to that i could literally say just set that field to this name and then i'm also able to reference that later i can reference origin when i tell it where to move it so let me find 
and this one's actually a due date or a calendar. Well, yeah. So every Friday, I the, and the reason I track all this is I move the card over to where it's done, and then I eventually want it to move it back to its its home base of meals. But I don't want to move it in right away because I have other automation that's going to recommend meals, and I don't want it to just you know recommend a meal I just made. But every Friday, it will go look at things that I haven't made in the last 30 days and move it back to its original list. And this is how I'm able to reference whatever that value is in the custom field. So I could go on for hours and talk about this. There's obviously lots you can do with it. Like I said, it's a great way to link cards together because you can say, hey, go to another board and find a card name, reference card name of the original card, and then do you know X, Y, Z to it. So I definitely encourage you to play around with this if you're trying to take your Trello automation to the next level. Um, there's lots of different examples of ways you can use it. Um, again, you know, you can see I have different rules where it's like, if you're using it as a CRM, you could set an email field to, you know, whatever that email address is, and then you could send an email notification. You can set up your own notifications in a CRM where when you move a list, it finds that contact or that card's email field and sends them an email in the notification with details about it. So feel free to play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions or if you get stuck, and uh, I hope you find it helpful. See you soon.